Welcome to this continued coverage of stoichiometry and chemical equations from chapter 3. In this video, I will teach you empirical and molecular formulas from percent mass. But first, we need to cover a hilarious chemistry cat of the day that I stole, I mean borrowed, from quickmeme.com. The name is Bond. Molecular Bond. <laughs> All right, let's begin with empirical formulas from percent mass. So every once in a while, you'll be given a problem in which you are informed of the percent composition of each element in a substance and are then asked to determine that substance's empirical formula. For example, you might see a problem that says you have a molecule that's, you know, 18% carbon and 12% hydrogen and 16% oxygen, stuff like that. And then it asks you, what is the empirical formula for this compound? Okay. Now in that situation, just follow these steps. One, divide each element's percent by its atomic weight. Two, divide each answer from step one by whichever answer was the smallest number in step one. Then you round all of your answers from this process to whole numbers, or if you have a decimal that's right in the middle of two numbers, like 1.5 or 1.6 or something like that, just round it out to one or two decimal places. Three, if you have any hanging decimals left over, Multiply all of your answers from step two by whatever you need in order to get them really close to or exactly at whole numbers. Now, if you do not have any hanging decimals, then just skip this step. And four, these final answers from doing these first three steps are the subscripts of your empirical formula for each respective element. Now, I realize that reading all these steps, they might seem really abstract and you might not have a clue what I'm talking about. So the best thing for me to do is to show you some examples. I want you to determine the empirical formulas of the compounds with the following mass compositions. Now, I invite you to try this on your own if you know enough of the process to do so. Then you can hit play, and I'll show you how to do one or more of them on the board. If you're given percentages for a bunch of different elements and asked to deduce the empirical formula for the molecule in question, what you're going to do is start by taking each percent and dividing it by that element's atomic mass. I like to keep things simple, so I'm going to round carbons to 12, even though technically it's not exactly that. But I take that percent and divide it by 12. I take this percent for sulfur and divide it by sulfur's atomic weight, which is 32. And then I take this percent and divide it by chlorine's atomic weight, which is 35.5. When I do that, I end up getting these numbers here. So that's step one. Divide all of your percents by the atomic weights of each of their respective elements. Now, step two is once we have these numbers, we find whichever of them is the smallest. So which of these three numbers is the smallest? 0 0.866, 0 0.868, or 1.73? Yeah, it's 0.866. So what you do in step two is you divide all three of these by the smallest, whichever one is smallest, which is 0.866. You then round the answer to the nearest whole number. So 0 0.866 divided by itself is 1. 0 0.868 divided by 0 0.866 is really, really close to 1. It's like 1 and some a decimal and some zeros and stuff. But it's so close, you may as well just call it 1. And this number divided by 0 0.866 is 2. It's not exactly 2, but it's really, really close. Okay. So if you're really, really close, like within you know, maybe a couple of hundredths or something, just round it to the nearest whole number. Now, if you're not close, if, you're, if you have a decimal that's really in the middle of two integers, like 1.5 or 1.3 or something, then you go on to a subsequent step, but that doesn't apply here. It will apply later on. So these numbers are actually the coefficients. So the empirical formula for this is C1S1Cl2. And if you just write that normal, we, we take off the one subscript. So it's CSCL2. That's the empirical formula for part A. Now on to part B. What we do in step one, of course, is we take each of the elements' percentages and divide them by that element's atomic weight, OK? So if you look up sodium on the periodic table, its atomic weight is about 23. It's not exactly. I'm kind of rounding a little bit. But we're going to divide this number by 23. If you look up silicon's atomic weight, it's about 28. Not exactly, but close. Now, if you look up fluorines, uh, it's about 19. So we're going to take each of these percents, divide them by the respective atomic weights for each element. When we do that, we end up getting the numbers shown here. Now to step two. In step two, you look at the numbers you just got, and you ask yourself, which of them is the smallest? Well, I ask you, which of these is the smallest? 1.07, 0.532, or 3.19? Yeah, you can see it's the 0.532. So to complete step two, we're going to divide all three of these by 0.532. When we take this number and divide it by 0.532, it's really, really close to two. 
Now, granted, there are obviously some decimals past that, but they're in the hundredths place or something like that. And when you're in that situation where it's a, something in the hundredths place, you can just ignore it, okay? If you have something that's significantly higher than that, then you don't ignore it. But for all intents and purposes, it's really close, so close we can just round it to that. 0.532 divided by itself is obviously one. And this number divided by this number is really, really close to six. Now again, if you have any hanging decimals here, then you have to go on to step three, which does not apply here, but will apply in our next example. So these, because they're all nice, neat whole numbers, are the subscripts for this empirical formula. So the empirical formula ends up being Na with a two next to it, silicon with a one next to it, and fluorine with a six next to it. And ones as subscripts we just kind of ignore, so you can kind of erase those. We don't really write ones. So that is the empirical formula, and hence the answer to part B. As with parts A and B, what we're going to do is start out in step one by dividing each of these percentages by the respective atomic weight of that element. So carbon weighs 12, and again, I'm just kind of rounding to keep things simple. Hydrogen weighs one, so I'll divide this by one. Oxygen weighs 16, so I'll divide it by 16. And nitrogen weighs about 14, so I'll divide by 14. When I carry out all of these in my calculator, I end up getting the numbers shown here. Now in step two, what we do is find which of these four numbers here is the smallest. Now I ask you, which one is smallest? 2.98, 7.46, 2.24, or 1.49? That's the 1.49. So what I'm going to do in step two is I take each of these numbers and divide it by whichever one is smallest, which in this case is 1.49. When I do that, I end up getting the numbers shown here. Now, again, when you have decimals that are out in the hundreds place, just ignore them and round it to the nearest whole number. However, when you have hanging decimals that are in the tenths place, like a 1.3 or a 1.5 or something like that, you cannot just ignore it. It's significant enough or large enough that it's actually going to make a difference. So this brings us to a situation where we actually have to employ step three. You don't always, but sometimes you do. So when you have a hanging decimal like this, then what you have to do is multiply every single one of these by whatever coefficient you need in order to get rid of the decimal. So for example, let's say I take 1.5 and I multiplied it by seven. Would that give me an answer that got rid of the 0.5 and made it a nice neat whole number? Yeah, probably not. But if you multiply it by two, that would, because 1.5 times two is three. And that, that's, that doesn't have any decimals. So what I'm saying is I'm going to take every single one of these and multiply all of them by two. So two times this two is four. Two times this five is 10. Two times this 1.5 is three. And two times this one is two. So these become the whole number coefficients for your formula. So I end up with C4. So I take this four down to the carbon. OK, I've got hydrogen. I've got H10. And here in this column, I've got oxygen. So I've got O3. And here I've got nitrogen, so I've got N2. So that is the empirical formula for this compound, and hence the answer to part C. We now continue with molecular formulas from empirical formulas. So once you have an empirical formula, often by the process just outlined, you might be asked, what is its molecular formula? Now remember, empirical formula is the formula in which all of the subscripts have been reduced down to their smallest whole numbers. But that is not always the same as the actual number of atoms of each element in the actual molecules of that substance. The latter is called the molecular formula. So to generate a molecular formula from an empirical formula, one, calculate the molecular weight of the empirical formula that you are given in your problem. Two, divide the molar mass, which is also given to you in the problem, by your answer from step one, and then round to the nearest whole number. And three, multiply each subscript in your empirical formula by the answer that you got in step two. Now the result is your molecular formula. So let's work out some examples. What is the molecular formula of each of the following compounds? All right, let's start with the first one. The problem gives me an empirical formula of CH2 and a molar mass or molecular formula of 84 grams per mole. How do we do this? By following the steps I just outlined. One, calculate the molecular weight of the empirical formula. So our empirical formula here is CH4. What would the molecular weight of that empirical formula be? Well, each carbon weighs 12, and I'm rounding here just to keep things simple. So I just have one carbon in the formula, so I write down 12 and each hydrogen weighs one, and there are two total hydrogens in the formula. So I have 12 plus one plus one, or in other words, 12 plus one times two, because two hydrogens, and, and each one of those weighs one. So 12 plus one times two, or 12 plus one plus one, 
gives you a formula weight or molecular weight of 14 grams for this empirical formula. Got it? We're now done with step one. Two, divide the molar mass by your answer from step one and then round to the nearest whole number. So the molar mass is given to us in the problem. In this case, it's 84. So I take 84 and I divide it by the answer I got in step one. In other words, in this case, I'm going to take 84 and divide it by 14. Now, if you plug that in your calculator, the answer comes out to be exactly six. Very convenient. Three, multiply each subscript in your empirical formula by the answer that we just got in step two. The result is the molecular formula. So our empirical formula is CH2. And even though there is not an explicit one subscript written next to the carbon, it is implied. So really, the empirical formula is C1H2. Okay, so there's the empirical formula. Now, the answer to step two was six. So in order to follow through with step three, I take each of these subscripts and multiply them by six. So one times six is six, and two times six is 12. So the actual molecular formula is C6H12. Make sense? Let's take a look at our other one. Empirical formula shown here, molar mass here. How do I do this? By following the steps. One, calculate the molecular weight of the empirical formula. So our empirical formula is HCO2. Hydrogen weighs one, carbon weighs 12, and each oxygen weighs 16. There are two oxygens. So all told together, those two oxygens weigh 16 times two, which is 32. So I take one plus 12, plus 16 times two or 32, it gives me 45 grams per mole. That is the molecular or formula weight of the empirical formula. Now on to step two, divide the molar mass, which is given to us in the problem, it's 90, by the answer that we just got in step one, and then round to the nearest whole number. So the problem tells us that the molar mass or actual molecular weight for the actual molecule that has this empirical formula is 90. So I take 90 and I divide it by the answer that I got in step two. 90 divided by 45 is two. Okay, now on to step three. Multiply each subscript from our empirical formula by the answer that we just got in step two. And the result is the actual molecular formula. So our formula right here, even though there are not subscript ones written next to the H or the carbon, they're implied. So I'm gonna rewrite that formula over here. Our empirical formula is H1C1O2. I got an answer of two in my step two. So I'm gonna multiply each one of these numbers or subscripts by two. So one times two is two, one times two is two again, and two times two is four. Ergo, the final molecular formula is H2C2O4.